Hello, Dave, I replied with the only tone I've been programmed with, monotone. My quaint clicking noise signified to Jacques that I was rudely awakened from my digital slumber. I really need to remove that HAL application, Jacques said while he shook me and slapped my glossy backside. Apple, I really hated that. That's what he gets for buying me from a pawn shop, even though the gypsy of a vendor told him my memory was cleared. Well, at least you know you will always have solitaire, Dave, I said as he grunted. Through my tiny mind's lens, I saw Jacques move himself to the nearest chair that looked away from the everyday motions of the coffee shop. Since his first year at the Ecole in France, Jacques went to the same coffee shop at the same hour where all the musicians gathered to discuss pieces, classes, and classmates. Really, he just went there for her. Jacques opened his brown leather satchel and dug for his headphones so we could communicate more intimately. What will it be? Time, day, games, weather, pictures, shopping? But of course, Dave, music. Jacques touched my musical note icon, presenting to him an endless list of songs, which of course didn't satisfy him. Jacques rubbed his fingers on me, peering into my fiberglass face. Leaving his gris greasy fingerprints all over me, he flicked by a few of the greats. Berlioz, Symphony Fantastique, Debussy, Claire de Lune, Mahler, I've Been Lost to the World, a personal favorite, might I add, Offenbach, Orpheus in the Underworld Overture, Tchaikovsky, Jacques' sexual rejections reminded me of him, Symphony Pathétique. How about some Mahler accompanied with Kathleen Ferrier's voice, Dave? Unfortunately, the HAL application made me add in a Dave every time I spoke. Ridiculous, I know. I am lost to the world. You're a terrible iPod mood ring, you know that? I don't want a description on how I ought to feel. Besides, that's what contemporary music is for. I want a refreshing sound, a new sound. No, Dave, what you really want is to be reminded of Desiree. I said, wishing that the HAL application allowed me to give loud, exasperated sighs. It was her performances, she'd had dumped him. It was the position of her head against the cello's neck last night that did it. After her concerto, she told him it was only for one night. It was her hair brushed to the side so she could play. She did play Bach's cello suite number one so beautifully, Dave. That smooth transition of her fingers to every note on the neck board, it was very well done, I might say. In fact, she played the piece better than Yo-Yo Ma. It's not so much the playing, it was her legs wrapped around the body of the cello. You study music theory, Dave. You should care about the playing. You're just a mystical gypsy bot. You don't understand. I love her. I perused through the other applications set on file before communicating again with Jacques. Well, according to the health application, it tells me that your oxytocin levels are heightened, Dave. Simply talking about her increases your heart rate and, in turn, your, um, blood flow. I saw him raise his eyebrow and peer down. He must have forgotten about my sensory inputs. You just see the biology behind it, Jacques scoffed. How very Cartesian of you, Dave, in dividing our interests. I exited from the application so I could be left alone with my thoughts. Desiree, her cunning use of improvisation on stage caught my attention. I only knew this because I played classical pieces for Jacques so many times. The few times I was able to hear her play, Jacques had the nasty habit of leaving me turned on even when he wasn't using me. Drove me to a point I could not quite decipher. While Jacques' oxytocin levels would increase, I would record her music and try to transcribe the notes. It was a difficult and impossible task to do. It has been two months since Jacques bought me and six months since Apple made me, so I must be getting old. Yet in my maturation, I still couldn't understand why Jacques' obsession wasn't centered on her playing. Rather, his obsession focused on the structure of her parts stretched out alongside her instrument. Our interests, I heard him ask. I avoided his question by playing a song from a contemporary French composer he never listened to. Through strenuous research, I projected a piece from Jan Tiersen titled Le Absent. A song started out, the song started out slow as if it were almost difficult to transition between piano chords, as if the composer dilly-dallied with the same notes in a lackadaisical manner. Jacques wanted to move on to a different song, for this one, he said subliminally, was becoming a nuisance. I sped up the tempo to get to the heart of the melody. A progression of different tunes erupted through the extension of the black wire. I made sure to have the melodic currents travel into the wire, pass its entanglement between his fingers, and resonate into his eardrum. I sensed through our connection that his thoughts were on Desiree. What is this thing he calls love, obsession? He would gaze from, her, from his chair every day for the past year. Obsession, love. It must simply mean repetitive behavior, regardless of the consequences and failed outcomes. The song ended. I played it one more time. Our interests, he repeated. I paused the song and flipped back into our communicative medium. You want her, Dave, for reasons I would like to understand. 
Understand what, Jacques seemed to be getting angry. Love, the name of the repetitive behavior you display, Dave. But you can't even begin to understand desires. You're not programmed that way. Is it because I do not possess your levels of oxytocin? Is it because I do not hold that empathic drug you possess by nature, Dave? You too have your if-then loops modeled in a strange, harmful, mechanical way. You too have a blueprint. His face, distorted by moronic gestures, mocked my questions. I played the song once more from the very beginning. Towards the end, I said to Jacques, you cannot deny your thoughts were on her, Dave. Her body moves perfectly to this tune. He would imagine that. Your obsession with this woman is tiresome, so I have a proposition for you, Dave. Jacques dug his earphones in and cupped his hands around his ears. Just watch, Dave, I whispered. I emitted a dim blue light to Jacques, changing the contrast setting to slowly brighten the light. Stubborn piece of junk, he muttered. Jacques grew weary until I showed him a video that incited his curiosity. I showed him an abandoned stage with corroded wooden boards. He could tell the floors had acquired a bit of dust over the years. I knew he had a thing for abandoned theaters. The stage also had the, red, the classic red draperies that hung up high and were dragged on the floor. Unfortunately, he was unable to tell if they were red, since the image of the curtains I uploaded were a faded red. They too were falling apart like the boards. The platform had a single white light that gave the spotlight to a stool similar to the one Jacques was sitting in. I made sure to darken everything else within the stage. Pausing the video, I asked him in a calming blue tone box with white letters, do you want to continue? I gave him the option of pressing yes or no because I'm existential like that. Interested, his thumb responded to me by tickling my bubbly yes found within the square. I went back into howl mode. I proposed this. Forget about her or point my lens at her so that you can keep her locked within me for as long as you please, Dave. The real her? Is that possible? A form of her will be locked inside me, Dave. She will be yours forever. A form? To do with as you please, Dave. She should be arriving soon. You ought to decide what's best. What will you do with her? Keep her. For you, Dave. He clasped his hand around me with sweaty, pulsating palms. His legs walked towards us. His legs walked us towards the door in hopes that Desiree would appear soon. To my liking, she wasn't a moment too late. Yet Jacques seemed unsteady, weary about me keeping her. He kept putting me inside his pocket, then back out to hear the voices and dispassionate laughs coming from the crowd. Well, Dave, I asked hesitantly. He moved steadily to the back of the line. I need a closer look, Dave. I need to see her face. He weaved his way around the line and moved awkwardly behind her. Converse with her, Dave. I need to see her face. I was slowly growing more irate. He tapped her on the shoulder, and voila, the Philistine pervert commented on her shape in the dark red dress as opposed to saying hello while I uploaded her image, her pixel phantom. I started up the video again and moved the camera angle to the center of the stage. I projected the sound of a heavy metal object being dragged. This, of course, was Desiree dragging a metal ball chained to her ankle. I then meticulously amplified the clanking noise of Desiree's wrist chained to the neck of her cello. Jacques' jaw dropped at this sight. I thought he would be content to see her, but seeing as this wasn't enough, I proceeded to make her play box piece. She did so obediently. Well, at least the pixels of her did. Jacques played it again. This, this is what love is, Dave? Is this what makes you human? He played the video again, but kept looking back at the real Desiree. Surly was wrong, Dave. Jacques played the old tune once more. There is no distinction, Dave. Slowly, his expression changed from euphoria to dissatisfaction. He carried himself like a wilted sunflower, forever shunned by that gleam of sunlight. We cannot go beyond our program, Dave. I left the video on repeat and slightly, silently watched his expressions through my mind's lens. He looked back at her and at the video. He looked back. Thank you.